everybody. This is Plan Your Greatness, and I am your gracious host, Carlton Hamilton, and let's get right into it today. We are starting the Getting Unstuck series. How, how do you, how do you, see, I got stuck there. All right, so what are some of the things that you are doing or things that you do not want to do that keep you stuck? Well, this is the series where we're going to talk about some things that I've, I've experienced in my life and things that I've seen that are, going to, that are going to help you recognize if you're doing these things, you're probably stuck. And if you think about, you know, stop doing these things, you're going to get yourself unstuck. All right. So let's get started. We're going to go from five to one. So this is number, this is number five. Number five is asking why versus how questions. And, and let's, let's break this down for a bit. If you are asking why questions, I firmly believe in my experience, and I've had a very up and down roller coaster life. There's very few people out there. I believe, I don't think there's anybody that, that can say that they've had a life that's even similar to mine because of all the nuances and different things that I've gone through. So I've had tons of experience of knowing as far as being stuck and getting out of that place. So when it comes down to asking yourself questions, I honestly believe that you need to be asking yourself how questions as opposed to why. Okay, Why questions, I believe, are taking you from your past up until the present. And let me give you an example. Let, let's say you go into your old closet of awards and, and things of that nature, things that you did in the past. That's everything that you have seen, that you've done, that you already know, things that you've accomplished. That's it. That brings you up until now. It brings you up to the present. You're going to go, you're going to see what happened and you're going to see why happened. And you're going to congratulate yourself. Oh man, I was, I was great. I was big man on campus. I did all that. And that just brings you up to right now. But when you start asking yourself how questions how takes you from the present and it gives you a blueprint. It gives you a formula. When you ask how, like if you see somebody that, hey, uh, man, how did that guy get to where he is right now? Maybe you go ask him or you just do some research on him and you can see the path that he took. That is a how question. Because when you are asking why questions, a lot of times, why, why are what we call now haters? Because if you see somebody doing something that you really want to do. And maybe you really admire it, but you'd be like, why does happen to him? Or, how, you know, why, why, is, why is he there? Why am I not there? Because there was a situation where I was actually dating a girl and this other girl liked me. And when, because uh, I, I was good friends with her boyfriend. Actually, they were married at the time. And I actually, I was married at the time. But, when we invited them over on, and I found out later on, she said to herself, why don't I live in this house? You see what I'm saying? So she was looking around and thinking that maybe she deserved being there. But again, that doesn't give you a plan because if she really wanted to get with me or somebody like me, she should have said, well, then how can I get a guy like that? Same thing for guys. Well, how can I get a girl like that? Instead of looking at the guy and saying, man, how did that dude get that girl? Or why that girl get that, you know, asking why questions as opposed to uh, asking how questions as opposed to why. Because again, why questions are just operating out of your memory. Everything that you've seen, done, already know. The how questions are working from your imaginations, which is unlimited. It, it's The possibilities are endless as far as what you can do, what you can plan, what you can strategize. Now, what that does, it reminds me of when I was locked up in prison. Because one of the most fascinating things I learned in prison was when I started having conversations, because one, you don't ask, are you guilty or innocent? That, that's not a question you ask. And if you, you know, if you think so, just go ask somebody about that question. Ask somebody that question. They're going to tell you real quick, you know. But you don't ask somebody that question. But what you can ask them is, what did you do and how did you get here? So it was amazing that all these inmates were able to tell me what I call inmate articulation. They were be able to tell me with great detail what was going on in their lives at the time, why it happened, 
and you know the, the, the circumstances and everything that led up to where they were. And so as I as I was asking that question more and more and more, I started realizing that I was doing the same thing. I could tell you what happened, why it happened. But as I asked that question, I noticed that they weren't in any sort of mind transformation of saying like, okay, now this is where I'm at, but how do I go to the next level? When I get up out of here, how do I make sure that I do not, because you ask, if you get out and just ask, well, what do I need to get into or, or why? No, you need to ask, which are the questions that I started asking was, how do I get better so I do not come up in here, be, uh, come back in here? Because here's, here's the deal. When I got into the prison system, one of the first things I started to do was go through, as I realize now, I went through grief. I went through those five stages of grief, which are denial, anger, bargaining, uh, depression, and acceptance. And I, and, I, and I can remember my mindset. When I, when I came up in there, first thing I was denied, I was like, man, I don't belong up in here. Man, I don't, man, man, well, man, I, man I, I came from a two-parent home, man. I thought my house was a little, little dysfunctional, but not as bad as you cats. Man, I don't belong up here, man. I, I, I didn't live. I ain't no thug. I ain't, you know, I ain't no gangster. I ain't none of that stuff. I don't belong up in here. That was the first thing I did. Then next, after I realized, yeah, you do belong up in here. And then I started getting angry. I started going, man, I started feeling sorry for the end of my career. Why did my career end? Why did I have an injury? You know, I used to throw the ball near 100 miles an hour, and, and now I can't do anything. I, you know, I, I'm only a baseball player. And, uh, and now, that part I just brought up right there, where the mindset where I thought that I was only a baseball player, in sociology, what is that is called trained incapacity, which means... All the skills that I had as an athlete, I didn't see how they transferred into real life. So I became stuck. I didn't see how the very skills I had as a professional athlete could be transferred into doing anything. I just did not recognize that. So I went to, you know, just getting angry. Then I started bargaining. Then I started looking around and saying, you know what? You know, I could have done that crime a little bit better. You know, you know, what, you know, let me, let me run that through my head again. Why did I get caught? Well, you know, maybe I should have, instead of robbing folks, maybe I should have uh, sold dope. You know, just maybe it was the wrong crime. Then I became depressed because I realized that, you know, I just made some bad decisions. And then that moved me into, and I can't tell you how long that, that was. I'm, that made, that, that time may have been the longest. But what happened is from that point, I got to the point of acceptance of saying, yep, you belong in here. You committed a crime. You violated people's rights. And so what are you going to do or how you how are you going to make sure that you don't do that again, that you don't go down that path? And it's been 20 years since getting out. And as I mentioned before, the recidivism rate is absolutely through the roof. I think it's above 85 percent. So I've been out for 20 years. I've had no more problems. So asking those how questions as opposed to why questions have been very instrumental because once I started, once I accepted and I started asking those questions, I started asking about school. How can I take classes while I was in prison? I did that. How can I transfer those out into the into a community college or a university so I can graduate? I did that. Then I started thinking of how can I utilize this degree to get a job? How can I utilize this degree and all my experience to start a business? And then I, you know, I started setting these goals. I wanted to be a father. I'm a, you know, I have two teenagers now. I wanted to be more flexible in my schedule. So I became the business owner with a, you know, owning my businesses. So I had the flexible schedule. I started asking myself the how question. So I think it is so important that you understand that you need to, you can, you can start asking the what and the why. But you better go and then ask yourself how, because how is going to give you the process. How is going to give you the fuel as opposed to, you know, just, just knowing where you are. How knows where you are, then how knows how to get you to the next level. And when you start thinking that way, 
and start asking those how questions, you are beginning the process of planning your greatness. All right. So make sure that you are hitting the like button. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the share button if you believe this can help somebody else. And I'm going to say this again. Plan your greatness. Because you know why? Because no one else will. I'll see y'all next time.